<coughs> hi guys how's it um it's it's karabo what's up uh so okay let me raise my voice a little bit so that i don't struggle with the silence detector i'm still kind of sick but i hope that the body i hope that my body is just gonna overcome this by itself things are looking promising because i feel physically better even though the situation in my throat is worsening i don't know if you can hear that i'm kind of nasally i spoke yesterday that i got ass assaulted with so much demonic attack that i got sick and i'm still sick uh, the headache however is not giving me problems so thank god for that uh yeah i just have to put some caveats out there i'm wearing app makeup so it's gonna bounce around please look out for my um captions they're not 100 percent accurate so just listen to me if you can hear or use youtube captions and also my silence detector takes out some of my words and i don't know what that's about uh however the comprehensive message overall um is graspable so that's all that matters for now because i don't have resources so i really like i'm working with what little i have I'm trying to deliver as, as best po uh, quality as I possibly can. Now let's get to the the, the message. You know what, guys? Um, okay, so currently there is a war in Israel. If at all you've been watching the news, uh, today is the 9th of September, 2023, and um, what is this like? Uh, there's like a whole war that's raging. You know that whole attack by Hamas on Israel. There's a retaliation, and we are, I anticipate, just as we all do that uh, Hamas is, is frankly going to be a crush, okay? Uh, and what it is that they did was extremely unwise. I spoke about that yesterday. Uh, I don't know what they were trusting on to go and attack Israel when militarily Israel is so much stronger. So I, I really, like, all I could contr um, attribute the behavior of um, Hamas to is the fact that God confounded their speech because he's bringing about Ezekiel 38-39, that war, um, something has to poke and prod away at Gog and Magog of Magog to ultimately hook up that siege against uh, Israel uh, later on. This is not the Gog uh, Magog war, neither is it the Psalm 83 war, but I do believe it is going to inspire it because the response by Israel, uh, basically the obliteration of Hamas is going to raise up other Muslim uh, powers to basically make war with Israel. So it's going to bring about the some the, the, the Ezekiel 38 39 war. <clears throat> now that we've said that, there are other people that make better commentary about that. So you can go and check out all of those channels. News or Christian, for depending on what vantage point you want to talk about or talk from. But I want to discuss what's, uh, what's afflicting me. Right now, I'm under a lot of attack, quite a severe amount. And it's coming from multiple sources, but. Recently, one of my cousins, who used to be my best friend, has been on a drive, like she's in overdrive mode, frankly, in this regard, um, to neutralize me by any means necessary because she's trying to save her husband and her child that her occult organization has demanded the blood of or me and well she's made a decision that it's gonna be me so literally almost every second day third day whatever uh not even third day third day is too much second day sometimes it's like oh every single day in a row i get some dream about her and it's because she's actively like trying to frustrate me into oblivion i did let you guys know that she's going to die suddenly because of this because uh, she's uh, she's at a dead end she's in she's at a dead end her occult career is coming to an end because this thing is not going to end well for her it's not going to end well for her at all this is the end of the road for my cousin because the dilemma that she is in she cannot escape it but for either jesus or her own demise at this point i anticipate she will choose feats or activities that are going to lead her to so my mother, the casket <laughs> quiet her feats are going to lead her to to the casket because they're not going to lead her to Jesus. I I, I can literally almost bet like 80% of all that I have uh, in my heart that she will choose death instead of life. Uh, she's one of those, like, yeah. She would much rather get away with murder and the taboo of what she did, Agazingeni, in Dabazogu Kidra. She's not interested in being exposed. And so given that she has no regard for jesus or whatever it is that i've been doing my god she's not going to run to him for safety so she will perish at the hands of devil worshippers she's very similar to this guy in america who will stick to his ugly guns all the way up until he dies uh rather than cry out to god he's going to get killed 
by other people in the occult i spoke about that it's one of those you live by the sword you die by the sword so they live by witchcraft and they're gonna die by witchcraft and my cousin the walls are closing in on her and there is no getting out of this for her but for either my death or the death of her child and her husband both of them and if uh sorry the lord set me to stand in the gap for the husband and the kid i don't really care about the husband frankly if he breathed his last i would not bat an eyelid i don't care about all of these monsters in the occult i don't care it's like you made your bed lie in it okay <clears throat> but it was an instruction from god to stand in the gap for them uh so that i guess the kids might have somebody left to raise them finish raising them and this guy is going to be raising these kids by himself for the rest of their youth up until i guess he either remarries or whatever uh whatever might happen because the wife is dying my cousin is dying she has lost grace she has lost mercy the lord was gonna give her a deathbed i've already communicated to you guys that in cancer she was gonna get lung cancer and it was going to give her time she was going to be terminal and was going to give her time to take stock and it, it, she might have repented because of that the grace of the deathbed was a favor to me frankly by god because i prayed for my family to know jesus all of them and so the lord has given every last family member of mine a deathbed nobody has died suddenly ever since i prayed uh to get saved so anyone that has perished like there's not really there's not m many family members that have died in my family um uh, that are of the youth except not youth like but young enough right except for this one aunt uh, kind of distant removed um so twice removed type setup thing from a, a segment of the family that's kind of far away from all of us she's she was like the age more or less of not so much my mom but s like much how can i describe it like i have a younger sister that's 17 years younger than me yeah so she's in the middle she's not exactly mother age but she's also not um peer age she's much older than us but she's not she's much older than us the kids born in the 80s but also much younger than our parents um she passed away during covid from coronavirus right um that was a deathbed she was given a deathbed every last one of my family members extended family members have been given a deathbed because that's i guess for, in order for them to take stock so that on their dying bed they might make right with god because black people are hypocrites in the sense that they they absolutely adore their ancestors and what have you but when things really just get kind of deep and intense they run to jesus so on their deathbeds they tend to pray to jesus christ to, to god um because they mix you know christianity with all of this nonsense but makshubile they go only to god from from what i have observed so maybe my aunt might have given well i can't really call her an aunt she was more like a cousin twice removed type thing she might have since she was uh what is this since she was you know uh, hospitalized in an uh, a, a bit of a strange state and then ultimately put on an intubator and you know the whole process of covid what it is that it, it takes for people to come out of it or not uh, just the last stages of, of their death they tend to they get told i'm mean, we're going to be put in an intubator otherwise and then they know that they might not come out and so therefore it's highly likely that you know prior to a person going in that state prior to them getting machined up and hooked up onto machines you get my point they probably say prayers they make they put their affairs in order they hug family well can't really hug family members quarantine but they talk to family members on some meetings of puma guys yeah but then she perished so she might have actually gone to heaven because of that and like i said favor to me that's what the lord has done i also have an aunt who was a nurse um uh and she also passed away she was given a terminal illness she had a deathbed so I, I i don't think that this auntie ever made right with the lord because uh you know she did come what during the season of her sickness to my mom's house um to visit my mom because you know sometimes people who are terminal have enough energy to drive and see people type thing and she was still kind of in her sins like the from the conversation she was having she didn't have much god on her tongue <clears throat> she wasn't a woman putting her, her affairs in order she was just waiting to die without really like you know scratching her forehead to see if she can't do better by jesus so and besides and the reason why i say this is because the i, I did not see anything positive when she did die from the lord shortly after she passed away i got a dream of her and her husband her, her husband was still alive but her husband and 
and her children and the rest of the family i was not at the funeral because i don't go to anybody's funeral um and everybody in the family they were seeing her off with ancestors and they were expecting Je not not just ancestors but ancestors with jesus and in my dream this woman was about to pierce into a heaven of their own making in my dream where both ancestors and christ were embracing her so whatever she was talking to or about religiously in the end of her life a whole bunch of idolatry it was full of idolatry they, there was a mix of jesus and all the stuff and the lord is jealous he's a jealous god he will not share his stage with anybody so i don't think that aunt died safe the other one i can't really say what in the world was going on there because like i said she was quite distant i spoke all that to help you guys understand that my family members the lord tends to have mercy on them because i prayed and fasted and groveled and begged a quote from amina snot and trana and everything for their salvation when i got saved because i realized that <clears throat> a lot of south africans profess christ a lot of people in the world are professing jesus while they're lost i had grown up in a society of uh, a christian country a country that calls itself christian and i thought i was christian i thought i was saved until i realized i was lost i uh, grew up going to catholic schools and everything said for our father and a short little prayer every time before eating um but i was living like the world and, and you know even because i grew up in a country where the default religion is christianity so whenever people ask me what's going on with my faith i'm i would tell them i'm a christian slash catholic uh but i knew nothing about it i was unchurched i was unschooled i was irreligious i was just living my life with a an accessory of christianity on my back on my shoulder so when i got saved i found out therefore because so many of my people around me were also like that i discovered just how many people are going to hell albeit professing christianity when i really truly got saved i realized everybody is lost everybody is going to hell everybody literally everybody because there had not been not even one person that i knew that was living a radical consecrated life with jesus that actually showed fruit that bore fruit to evidence therefore that these are true disciples of the lord jesus christ not even one even though all of them were professing christ like literally all of them i don't know anyone that was that, that like was a, a, a self-professed atheist in all of my um <clears throat> upbringing except for one friend but she later said that she's a christian so she changed her mind even from atheism all of us were busy calling ourselves something of the christian religion however also embracing ancestors and all that jazz so i i groveled and i begged and i cried for god to save them because it's very deceiving when you live in a country where christ is preached um and everybody says they're christian when most of them literally a large majority something like 95 percent of them are actually still going to hell so i realized that it would take a, a miracle a shock wave a taser for my family members to truly be like what i had become to truly embrace the gospel so i took it with lots of grief on some god it's devastating because frankly everybody i will never see them again forever if they die in this state because i will be eternally separated from them where they are going uh i will be forever separated from them and it grieved me so badly that like i said it's not andrana is how i used to quite frequently if not every single day pray for my family members to get saved to get born again well the lord answers our prayers that's what's good so he gave them time uh type thing so there has not ever since then been any family member of mine that has passed away uh, that has not been given a deathbed to take stock given that we live in a christian country where the gospel is preached and where people sober up if they're given a deathbed for jesus they sober up if they're given a deathbed so a lot of South Africans that are entering heaven are entering in by the skin of their teeth. That's what I'm getting at. They're as through the fire. They're getting in as through the fire. All of their works are burnt to a crisp, bearing no fruit at all. However, they escape with just their souls. If they're given a deathbed, if they're given cancer, if they're given full-blown AIDS, if they're given uh, some, like, a, what is this, like a bad case of diabetes, or if they're just told by a doctor you've got five months to live, that's how many South Africans find themselves in heaven. Black, white, pink, purple, colored, whatever might be their race, it is because the default religion is Christianity, and so when you're told you're dying, you very highly likely are like okay god look i know i haven't been that tight with you all my life but please take care of my children and on top of that love me please receive my soul please receive my soul type thing so they repent on their deathbeds so they're like the thief on the cross that's what i'm getting at this apostate country is like the thief on the cross witches as well are like the thief on the cross in the sense that if they get given 
a deathbed, if they get given a, a, a terminal illness, they know that they can't just do witchcraft. Bayazi, they're guilty. They know that this is an abomination before God. They understand that Christ disproves vehemently of sorcery, and so they will stop doing witchcraft um, once they've got five months to live. They get their affairs in order and they clean their slates. Uh, that's very unfortunate that people only repent at that stage But the Lord saw the wickedness of my family and the wickedness of my country the apostasy of the world at large and therefore of South Africa And in order to answer my prayer in this apostate generation He basically gave them deathbeds. So when he showed me my cousin's demise He showed me a deathbed He showed me a terminal illness and the terminal illness of which was lung cancer because she's got a problem with cigarettes That's what's good. Um when I saw that lung cancer, I was like, Ugh, whatever, I don't care. Because at that stage, I was already very angry at her. And I could not care less. For me, it was like good riddance, like hamba, nja. But that was God showing me, that's me answering your prayer for the redemption of your family members. Otherwise, I would have just knocked her out because she is a menace, okay? She is a complete menace in, in the country. She is messing with souls, with people's lives, families. And on top of that, she's a murderess. Wabulaya muto. And I can't stand her, but just like every typical South African uh, if at all they're given deathbeds a lot of them enter into heaven by the skin of their teeth so your cousin will be given the grace and the mercy of a deathbed where she will basically take stock and think about everything that she's done know that it's wicked freak out be scared that in the three months that she has left to live with the cancer metastasizing to all different parts of her of her, her or her organs uh, she may very potentially cry out to the god of her cousin because she was irreligious and she was uh, just very pagan in the way that she was doing life had no guidance at all but she will have had a cousin that she will have observed survive a lot of darkness um that she sent her including a death spell and so recognize that there is a power that is good and holy that exists that might just embrace her and usher into a better place than where she's going so on her deathbed she would have thought about me and so therefore like the hypocrites that south african people generally are repent five seconds before dying uh, give her life over to jesus before dying because there's no way you're still holding on as a witch that has seen so much darkness as a witch that has seen so many ridiculous uh, demonic uh, um practices and cited such darkness like where people who are involved in the occult see a lot of menacing stuff they see the devil in the flesh sometimes or they see demons they um actively destroy people's lives they make observations of what happens to people after they, they cast spells on them and that creepy ominous ghostly sort of kind of haunting activity in people's lives is a, is a, is a scary feat for them to look at nonetheless they start to imagine themselves as puppets uh, puppet masters that are controlling the world around them so they become very mega megalomaniacal with eerie things these eerie things they would not want anybody slapping them with them so they tend to hook up a lot of uh, protection spells make sure that nobody ever does this to me may i never be haunted by something that i have sent to others to haunt them for the rest of their days uh, type thing but it's so ugly and unseemly the darkness of witchcraft that witches themselves turn away from it at death when they when they're given a terminal illness they don't want to be associated or close to that because it is eerie the prospect of them being entered into an eternal realm or a spiritual space whether or not they know one exists at all that looks similar to what they were dabbling with since you know you walk with the devil i guess you might as well end up with the devil if you walk around with witchcraft if at all they fear that they might just end up with a witchcrafty eternity that's when in all of their hypocrisy they're like um jesus if you're real please like i'm sorry that i did all those things to those people i apologize please have mercy on me and then they will grovel and the bible says that a broken and a contrite spirit he will not despise so if they're truly contrite and truly broken and again with great deal with a great deal of fear about where it is that they will go and they find comfort in the bible the lord will not shut the the door of heaven to them if anybody cries out to the lord he will likewise not turn away he is gracious that way he remains faithful when we're faithless for he cannot deny himself so he will let them come into heaven but like i said they will receive no rewards they will come in by the skin of their teeth they will barely make it they will escape as through the fire and leave with nothing but their souls they enter into heaven with nothing but their souls so they won't have they won't have much eternally their position in the millennial reign will be lackluster 
in the sense that they'll be just regular runners or skivvies but with glorious bodies and that are better than the regular Jane and Joe on the street that has got a flesh and blood body that is still inebriated with sin but they will still be in terms of rank very lowly in comparison to the rest of the kingdom of heaven that really strived and work hard, worked hard heartily as unto the Lord because they, they did not contribute to bringing anybody to Christ. Uh, the Bible says that people who contribute to bringing many to Christ will, will shine like the stars. So they will not have contributed to evangelizing any Anybody. They will not have worked as the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So they have no rewards. That's what I'm getting at. And they will feel it. They will p feel the pinch um, in eternity. They will definitely feel the pinch of being lesser than all the other saints that worked really hard. But nonetheless, it's better than hellfire. Who wants to burn forever? Who wants to weep and gnash their teeth for all of eternity? Where the smoke of their torment rises up forever. And they're always thinking about every opportunity of salvation that they rejected. Yeah, that's what's good. So uh, granted that particular issue the lord then had had mercy on um, my cousin and showed me a prophecy where she would per perish from lung cancer the lung cancer of which she would not have gotten even if she had smoked all the way up until 90 because of the fact that um the lord had uh, gr mercy on her uh, but the lord would have induced it into her bones because you know how there are people that that don't even get emphysema even though they've been smoking a, tw a 20 pa a 20 for like 40 years and they they die from like a random thing like a car accident like yeah nothing at all related to their smoking uh yeah tough setup thing exactly she would have not had uh, a, a a lung cancer diagnosis at all it would never have happened it was in, it would have been injected and induced into her body because of the fact that the lord would have wanted to cut her short her reign of terror on the earth would have been too much she would have been too demonic too satanic and too destructive to south africa to just continue to linger and linger she would have been uh, like the bane of everyone's existence that she meets i will give you an example there was this one woman that i met in a complex where i used to stay back when i was i wasn't independent it was in this season but i still had some money left so i was um in the i was living by myself there was a woman that i met in the clubhouse of that complex uh and i was just friendly to her she was friendly to me lo and behold within two to three days she had cast spells on me and i had a flood of dreams concerning that woman by then my spiritual gifting was already sharp i already knew what was going on and when i woke up from those dreams i was like my goodness this chick only knew me for two days that like there are some people that are so deeply involved in darkness and they are self-practicing so they don't consult sangomas right that anybody that makes them uncomfortable anyone that makes them jealous even slightly anyone can be a victim of theirs and such people are the kinds of people that God suddenly knocks out of the way. He has to take them out because they have no restraint. They're like a city without walls. They have no self-control. They are petulant and they just do what they want to do. And my cousin has graduated to that level of wickedness in the occult. I also had a friend at MTN uh, where she knew me for two weeks in the office. She was new. She was the the the... the, the the new recruit a segment manager and i was a project manager that and she one of the projects that i was working on she was assigned to it and we became we became fast friends because we shared we were we were like birds of a feather we got along on very many things and this chick within two weeks had already slapped me lambasted me with witchcraft like in just two weeks i didn't know very much at the time what it was uh, but i later came to learn when i you know my spiritual gifting i told you guys that all the witchcraft that was cast on me before i lost everything uh, it, it was only in retrospect when i was looking back now that i had lost everything that oh my goodness that was witchcraft so when i was thinking in retrospect in my sorrow having lost everything i realized that that chick was working at mtn for all of two weeks we became close friends and she made a decision that i'm not going to be anything at all anything at all in just two weeks so basically if she had not uh, passed the job interview to work at mtn i would have been safe from at least that sorcery there are people like that that you literally gotta walk around all of this earth crossing your fingers that you never meet them because just by meeting them alone you are already a target if they envy you even slightly if it's a guy that has a crush on you even slightly you are already slapped with corobella you already uh, infected with some last spells that um co that will cause you to be sexually um attracted to him even though yesterday you were not interested type thing there are people that are just ticking time bombs and no one is safe in their presence everybody is better off never meeting them but unfortunately there is no way that you can earmark them figure out who they are to avoid them so by the time you find out that lomundlo nagatembeki damage has already been done you've already been spiritually manipulated and now you gotta seek deliverance now you gotta seek deliverance and my cousin is that thing she is the kind of person that everybody better pray and cross their fingers for crying out loud that they never meet her because Akaloya Mocho that she's only known for a week.
next part the guy from the usa was also like that he found my content on the internet after some months i was active again on youtube he found me when i was dormant and i wasn't right i wasn't uploading or anything like that couple of weeks later from that not weeks months later uh since he had already subscribed to me but i had disappeared i reappeared and then he started to like follow my content comment and what have you follow me around all over on facebook even writing me and whatnot trying to get me to respond to him etc and finally when i responded to him uh, that was the beginning of basically the tyranny that i am now currently enduring at the hands of that man a complete stranger all the way from a, a, another country has been following me like a bad disease like uh, uh you know leprosy he's been like leprosy on my skin he's made he's been exactly like leprosy on my skin you know how a leper is avoided a leper is a person that everybody avoids because the disease is so highly contagious so a, a leper has got to be separated from the rest of the city where they're living otherwise they will spread it like gangrene in that particular city this guy rocked up and became leprosy on me because the moment he was in my space he decided that he wanted me and so everybody that could ever talk to me holler at me send me a dm anybody that could ever entertain me humor me he warded off with witchcraft he started to ward people off with witchcraft he gave me spiritual leprosy such that people avoid me because of his witchcraft what in the world I, I like that, that though, like i said these are the kinds of people that everybody just needs to kind of pray and hope crossing their fingers they never meet but it is not sustainable to think that you need to be fearful that way as a person living on earth you have to realize that there is protection in jesus christ and this guy that's made me a leper has not really made me a leper the lord has handed him over to his reprobate mind by making it look as if though i am his leper but what must be understood is that even this experience that i am going through with appearing to be his leper is 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 here to help people understand just how bad witchcraft is and how bad people who partake in it get due to the anonymous um nature of witchcraft in that it appears as if though nobody sees it they feel like they can use it for anything and to handle anyone and so you are not safe if you so much as step on their shoe by mistake in the office you are not safe if you so much as say a strange thing that they don't appreciate if if your boss looks at them with favor at you with favor and not them you you will very quickly find yourself all of a sudden having challenges from the same boss because now they don't like you as much because they've done a spell everybody is a potential victim of theirs and you never know who they are they live among us they're all over the show and so there's no truly protecting yourself otherwise you'd have to incubate yourself in a house never get out to make sure doubly sure that you never meet one and that's of course not sustainable so the best protection or shield that you can ever give for yourself essentially the law indeed the law does call himself a shield and a buckler uh, is, is jesus he's the one that makes sure that the random psychopath that just strikes people with a magic wand everywhere they go um in the office at the gym um on, on the school playground yeah he makes sure that they cannot afflict you uh just because they woke up on the wrong side of the bed anyway now that I've, I've helped you understand the epidemic now that you understand the epidemic of sorcery on on the ground let me go back to talking then about my uh this cousin of mine the lord has um had initially made a decision uh, not that the lord can change his mind all right everything is orchestrated and ordered in advance in a way that uh an, an omniscient god foresaw the reaction of people to certain things and so therefore from eternity past four ordained a different providential strategy for them given that they um dropped the ball it's how he's going to prosper to judge people at the great white throne judgment who will claim to say no you never gave me mercy you never gave me a shot and he will show him all of the potential um providential outcomes that could have been their lives and what it is that he threw in their general direction <coughs> to help them <coughs> repent and then they didn't take it just because somebody has been foreseen in advance to basically mess up and never repent never give their life to jesus christ does not mean that the lord will not offer them opportunities to repent because it is those offers for repentance that are going to be used against them at the great white throne judgment that they might be without excuse that they might not be say but garabo you pursued so lovingly however you didn't pursue me everybody will be will understand how god tried to pursue them and how they rejected it so nobody will be able to say to god you're an unfair judge and you are indeed a respecter of persons in a way that you said you are not in your word so this cousin of mine from what the lord showed me initially was awarded a cancer deathbed and this cancer deathbed 
he showed it to me and I communicated it to uh, them, her, everybody that Lomundo is dying and if she doesn't rep and the only way out really frankly is is <coughs> repent <coughs> the prophecy <coughs> was communicated I apologize I've got a little bit of a throat issue I told you guys that the prophecy was communicated um, and she took it for granted she imagined I had a dream of her putting down cigarettes okay uh, essentially telling herself that ha huh, I can go out of my way to basically block lung cancer from ever coming into my life and we'll see her little dumb prophecy come to pass she would have been given that lung cancer anyway because even upon dropping smoking she would have still gotten it because God I told you the lung cancer would never have come come into her lungs if she wasn't a menace there are people that have to be taken out of the way because in absent of them being taken out of the way they're too destructive in any ecosystem so it would have been one of those you quit smoking but still three years later you still got lung cancer because lungs that are um cigarette smoke that you have taken in your lungs for all those years never fully recover we know that that's a thing they never fully recover and there are people who even though they have quit now for five years still end up getting lung cancer even though they quit because they already messed up so much of their situation they're in so it's just ideal to never ever start smoking like at all okay uh but anyway let's this is not even about cigarettes let's just move past that um so this cousin of mine was awarded that opportunity and so much so did she heed the warning so much so much so did she heed the warning that i had a dream where she had abandoned cigarettes like that's really much all now she stopped smoking and i i mean but but instead but she stopped smoking but did not repent so all in the in an a, 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 what is this an effort elude prophecy while continuing to run rampant with them with devil worship what in the world like why why is it not unattractive to continue crushing everybody's soul to continue cursing everyone you meet why is that so much more attractive than just stopping when when god shows you that you're gonna die you would much rather quit smoking cigarettes and not using witchcraft what is it about this stuff like i i just i cannot see any joy or glory in it but i guess it's the, the, the attractive thing about it is the ill-gotten gain it is the fact that people gain things that they have not really worked for and they like being able to swing a magic wand and get things for free and for those reasons i guess they continue with it because nobody really likes to work hard do they nobody wants to just earn uh their keep they they are happy to cut corners and cheat I guess that's the human nature right there gawking right our hearts are deceitful above all things and desperately wicked i guess that's that thing happening anyway whatever so um the cousin did therefore not stop all of this insanity she imagined that this is going to be a weapon that she's going to be able to use for the rest of her life and so went even more destructive but of late she has become basically the uh, she's always been the bane of my existence but i've had respites over the years in the sense that i've literally had in uh, 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 in some instances been given a break from what she is doing i've been given a break from what she's doing for weeks months on end sometimes where i don't get dreams about her and so i even forget about talking about her and everything that she's doing so i don't see new witchcraft but then she rises up again and does a strange thing it's because she's got other victims right other people that she's busy stealing from and as stolen as i am or at least what she imagines is stolen from as i am uh, she anticipates that i suga sega empty she's like an empty vessel so there's not much to steal over there so she's been stealing from other people uh, all over the show but sometimes she is reminded again of me because the devil will never allow his servants to take eyes off christians they will be made to look at believers perpetually due to the fact that we are destructive to the kingdom of darkness so he's always scanning the atmosphere to see who is an active witch and uh, like basically changing turns on a christian by one of the agents of darkness to make sure that the christian never catches a break from witchcraft that's what's good so she's event she's made to eventually look at me but she's been on and off on and off and not so constantly like all up in my neck like it was in the very beginning of her starting out with sorcery once she imagined she had emptied me and laid me waste she sort of kind of had seasons of rest where she would leave me alone okay but from what it is that the lord showed me the reason now this thing that she's doing now she is going she's doing it unto death it's a trial by ordeal i've already communicated that right uh because of what is at stake and i've again been communicating that issue the lord therefore would have given her the deathbed the, the lung cancer where she would have been terminal and thought deeply like a typical south african therefore entering into heaven by the skin of their teeth that might have actually happened she was given the grace of a deathbed and even the person that was shown this particular dying prophesied it to her so it was an opportunity for her to repent and she instead like lifted up the standards of darkness to a height that she imagined is unconquerable undefeatable she did more she 
went more violent and decided that she is going to do something to even prevent lung cancer from happening quit cigarettes but then continue being dark uh yeah it was the her decision to continue in the darkness no it wasn't actually her decision to continue in the darkness that got her given that that made the lord take away the grace of a deathbed it was the decision of a cult that she works with and for to sacrifice her child and her husband or me one of those two that made her then re-energize her efforts on me and because it is such a trial by ordeal because like i said either her husband or child are in danger and child are in danger or me that i became the thing she's looking at i've already communicated that and because the lord set me to stand in the gap for the husband and the daughter they cannot be touched one of her little occult organization people advised two of them advised her that you, the best way to get to a christian is to rip them apart from jesus so she's been trying to water down my christianity or even get me to compromise in some way not because she wants us to be best friends again and walk in the sunset in similar demonic activity that you know we were so fast last time once upon a time so we did everything together so not so that we can do everything together again but rather that she can get me to a point when where i'm so watered down from jesus that i can successfully be shot by occult bullets that i can successfully be put in the ground that i can successfully be killed so she is on a murderous mission but with a very stealthy strategy to worm her way <clears throat> and to worm darkness into my life to infiltrate compromise in my life so she can save her husband and child it's not about me it's not about surviving it's not about her missing me it is not at all about anything that is positive where she's thinking but carabo you've lost everything you might as well join the occult she wants me to get darkened so she can kill me her evil is on another level this new murderous homicidal strategy that she is on is what took god's grace away from her it wasn't even so much that she walked around in darkness still even after being warned it is now that it, it is because of the target that is now on my back from her and her cult that the lord is like enough is enough genug is genug. and this time around you think it's a trial by ordeal you still have a shot to come to me because no one who cries to me will i ever turn away i will likewise not turn anybody away that comes to me so she still has a shot at redemption given that there's still breath in her lungs i keep saying this and i will say it over and over again no one can ever sell their soul to the devil all you got to do is cry out to god even when you've done some of the most demonic rituals under heaven you can still uh, an eternal life inheritor do you understand what i'm saying so this cousin has a shot just like every person just like any newborn baby just like any 27 year old just like any 50 year old on the earth that is still breathing and so far as there is still breath in your lungs and blood that is healthy coursing through your veins keeping you alive since life is in the blood you can be saved unless of course you've, you've blasphemed the holy spirit which is another story for another day okay yeah so this cousin can still be saved that's what's good so it it appears highly unlikely that that's going to happen because she is she's into silent treatment but she's been doing that for a minute however uh, uh, what i'm trying to explain by saying she's into silent treatment is to help you understand that this is a person that has become obsessed with me to a point of actively co like consuming my content she is watching me uh maybe not every video maybe not all day long because i can speak for a laborious number of um hours uh sometimes and i guess she's a busy woman she makes sure that she's busy enough for both of us since she laid me waste with unemployment uh type thing so she cannot listen to all of my content all of it but every so often she clicks on my stuff and given that this is a person that is surveilling me however keeping silent and acting like she's not even listening to me uh, she is aware of uh, my knowledge of what she's doing so she is especially then without excuse because she's been getting warned through my videos given that we no longer have a talking relationship and instead of doing what she ought to do repent and take the ramifications the rem sorry the ramifications of your actions in your stride like take you are a witch so you're go you are you you made yourself a witch okay and so therefore there's going to be reputational damage at some point you are not going to recover from what you did to me you are not going to recover your your original reputation people are already wagging their heads at her they're aware that she's done something strange there's no coming back from that there is eternal life to be embraced and hellfire to be avoided so at this point it's one of those what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and yet lose his soul essentially what does it profit you to keep your reputation aloft by gaslighting the living daylights out of me and pretending you didn't do it and then afterwards just die and go to hell 
Like, what is the point? Holding on to your reputation so everybody still thinks that um, I'm the crazy one over here that's talking on the rooftops about things that don't make sense while you get to look innocent even though you're entirely the perpetrator. You, you do all that until your death date and then now you're burning and you wish that you had much rather taken reputational damage and your name being dragged through the mud for like ever in a day by earth citizens while you're still breathing on earth however having been forgiven by jesus christ even though you haven't been forgiven by mankind like i just feel as if though that is not even a, a a debatable option like what what it is that is the feasible thing to take here the option to take is a reputational damage like accept it allow yourself to be dragged through the mud by the earth however loved and embraced and saved by jesus the bible said says if anything i was listening to scriptures of that nature on a loop today in one of the youtube channels that stream scriptures that i listen to every so often and one of the passages that woke me up essentially if anybody loses their life for the sake of god they will gain it for the kingdom of heaven but if anybody wants to hold on to their lives they will lose it that that's what sort of kind of got me out of sleep because i sleep listening to these um meditations all night long and the one that sort of kind of got me out of bed because i was now happy to wake up this morning was that one and that was the lord i guess low-key saying your cousin is about to lose her life because she's holding on to it and i had woken up from nightmares since i had just newly woken up about her that's why i'm talking about her right now because i i tend to be influenced in my conversations right now by all the demonic strategies that are afflicting me from the occult the, the kingdom of darkness or the satanic nonsense of the world at large um <clears throat> that that's what inspires what it is that i talk about okay and uh so after having woken up from the dreams that bombarded me last night i then heard that passage of scripture being repeated on a loop on soak stream or one of these channels that i watch and it said that if anybody holds on to their life they will lose it but if anybody loses their life for my sake i don't e i don't e the sake of the gospel of jesus christ um they will gain it and that was god showing me the person you just dreamt about is about to lose her life because she is holding on to it she is holding on to her reputation she's holding on uh, like a fake reputation she has built for herself an empire on top of the bones the cadavers the literally valley of dry bones of other people she has grown off the backs of other people she has gone to where it is that she is at right now uh, from the blood of people that she sacrificed and from stealing the careers of others from pulling the rug from other people's she has made doormats out of friends of hers family members she has lain people destitute waste i am not the only one she's an active witch and she is slapping even strangers she's just known for a week but she doesn't want anybody knowing that she wants to get away with all that murder and so for those reasons she's holding on to her life and she will lose it and uh, who is the one person that is standing on the rooftops exposing her it's me it's her arch enemy her arch rival even though once upon a time we were the best of friends and so in her attempt to knock out a christian that is creating awareness in this regard she will die because i'm holding on to christ and i have lost my life for the sake of the gospel so i will gain it that's my promise but her promise is that since you're holding on to your life you're gonna lose it i lost mine and i'm gonna gain it she is currently holding like for dear life onto hers and she's about to lose it she's about to lose it so i keep getting bombarded by these incendiary dreams that are very disquieting and they're making me very sad and guys the demonic attack is real it's alive the attack on the mind the mental torment is a real thing uh the the depression the the, the forlorn the forlornness the feelings of despair they're alive and they like it literally follows me around all day long like a ghost just hanging on my shoulders and no matter what i do whenever this demonic attack is in operation nothing makes me feel better no listening to my content no watching any of my videos my exercise no listening to any prophecy on the internet uh rapture dreams of people anything at all that generally tends to motivate me inspire me watching comedy skits of random secular people in the world uh, it tends to work to you know kind of defibrillate me back to excitement happiness to see that okay the world is still okay you know uh, people are still smiling so i guess there's still something to look forward to the sun is still rising things that tend to make me feel better they don't work and sometimes this slump that i'm in is so severe that i start to even say things in my mind like is it really such a bad idea that i should die 
So essentially, I am being killed by my cousin and this depression, I have to fight it. I have to make war with it. I have to brittle it. I have to, by the spirit, put it to death. I have to use the word of God to demolish those arguments and those lofty pretensions that exalt themselves above the Most High and hold into captivity rather every thought to the obedience of Jesus Christ. But that spiritual battle, the fact that there was somebody literally trying to put me in it, in a loop, in Jefela, in like some kind of a Hunger Games arena, just perpetually fighting in, in the center for instance of the Colosseum as a gladiator with no rest no respite no lunch break no what do you call this uh, no opportunity to take a, a breather take a beat like yeah the the intention of this woman given that she is uh, at the end of herself and the walls are closing in is to endure me through the circus of sorrow where i'm like a gladiator fighting in the Colosseum for 24 hours at night even when there are no spectators i'm still fighting when there's nobody watching, I'm still fighting. I am properly like in the big brother house of gladiators where 24 hours a day cameras are rolling and I, I still got to put on a show. I have to keep fighting it, praying against it. And I have to conquer a depression that is not of me, a depression that is not from me, a depression that has been induced by demonic attack 24 hours a day. I'm sorry, joy belongs to the Lord. The Bible says um, that the wicked are like the tossing sea whose waters bring up maya and dirt continuously there is no rest thus saith the lord for the wicked so because they have no peace because they have no rest they then want to come and take it from the disciples of the lord jesus christ when the lord jesus christ made it clear to us who belong to him that the weeping may endure for the night joy comes in the morning so if there is somebody actively working to make sure that you never get your joy in the morning that's someone that god is going to wipe out the way why due to the fact that absent of them being wiped out the way he cannot fulfill his promise of giving us joy in the morning when we weep all night long seasons of sorrow and we get conquered we conquer them sorry we overwhelm them on the other side we don't just perpetually stay in a state of depression even the most persecuted christian has respites has bouts of joy only look at what happened with joseph in egypt he was a sorrowful man that had been thrown into slavery by his own brethren but he was given favor by potiphar in potiphar's household and became the head slave so he had joy for a season even in persecution potiphar's wife did what he did what she did to him he then found himself in prison and in prison he was given favor by the head honcho there that then put him above all the affairs of the prison so joseph might have been persecuted all throughout all of those years in egypt but he had seasons of joy in it so even in our like sorrow as we are bleeding inside as christians we can actually laugh at jokes we can actually celebrate something i have i can personally vouch for that i've been suffering for nine years now gonna like it's going to be nine years in september oh, it is nine years actually uh in, in in september that's when i hit my anniversary of sorrow because september was when everything hit the fan in my life nine years ago so i'm officially 100 now in nine years of sorrow so i'm going on 10 years i am in my ninth birthday in sorrow type thing uh and in that nine years it hasn't all been doom and gloom i've been able to laugh and smile you all know i can be very jocose i laugh a lot i'm actually quite bubbly naturally even if people are trying to take that out of me yeah i can laugh because the lord has just like with joseph given me respite to have joy in the morning even though weeping is enduring through the night but what this cousin of mine is trying to do and many people involved in the occult is keep Christians in a constant state of depression so when they come at you with a flood death curses a flood of despair curses things that are meant to push you to the end of yourself that's when God starts to like he just like withers them away that's when the Lord lost a crater in the center of what they're doing to make sure that they cannot make of him a liar who says in the word that i am not a man that i should that i should lie nor son a man to change my mind so when he says you're gonna weep yes fine but you're going to laugh in the morning he says many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord uh, but delivers him from them all in order for him to be truly god the scriptures that he has used has, that he has prophesied over our lives using he's got to fulfill them meaning that we can't just stay depressed we have got to break through and if there's somebody actively blocking the sun from shining into your ecosystem the lord knows how much of that you can take and once you have reached the height of your depression and how forlorn you are he will break you through and that breakthrough sometimes means literally shooting to the ground removing annihilating extincting as in killing is making you unable to breathe whoever is making it impossible for you to be jocos again whoever is making it impossible for you to stay bubbly as a christian whoever is making it impossible for you to have that joy coming in the morning he will knock them out the way because it is blasphemous and a re regret on his own word about who he is for him to just leave them in that state so while the lord might be 
Slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, not willing that any of them should perish, but that all of them should come to know him. He is not going to be long suffering over their sin at the expense of Christians whom he has favored above the world because we love him. We are his disciples. And so he will fulfill his word fast and furious in protecting us, sever his grace on the wicked if the wicked are standing in the way of him fulfilling his word about what he does for the church and that's what my cousin is doing i apologize for the speech lag my phone is giving me problems but the audio is fine so i guess we're moving on right yeah so i explained like in the previous part if at all i'm in a different part then you will know that that was the thing from that i was continuing from there is no way under heaven that the lord god almighty would would uh, cancel what he said about himself concerning those who love him in his word in favor of the lost that he has grace and mercy over he will quickly sever that grace and reach the wine press of his wrath the fullness of it against their wickedness because if at all they are actively standing in front of a christian and they are hurting believers so members of the kingdom of darkness are really i would go so far as to say by far the most endangered species on the earth because of the fact that they they are so focused they are so determined their their daily itinerary is is heavily you know focused on christians they are berated and out of their minds with irritation over innocent people uh they are bloodthirsty that's what the bible calls them feet that are swift to shed innocent blood they've got feet that are swift to shed innocent blood and they have got this massive bone to pick with the body of christ because we intercede for their victims and so they cannot succeed in their rituals all the time due to christians constantly just nya, 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 praying again up against what they're doing and so they tend to just focus the living daylights out of their energies on the body of christ and if christians can bear it they will be given grace and they will live another year to commit their uh, abominable acts but if they have beleaguered the church to a point where nobody can breathe anymore nobody can get a respite you must just keep running like the flesh in a loop and defila without taking a break that's when he starts to knock them to the ground and we are getting there if anything i believe we're already there where people in the occult are about to drop like dominoes ba, 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 because they are so desperate to finish the thing that they've started against the body of christ and no, never mind the body of christ but the world at large and we are the intercessors we are the restrainer that is blocking or staying staying many of the wicked activities of the earth from thriving and their irritation is getting to a point where they're so abusive now to christians it's happening globally they're so abusive now to christians that either the lord will rapture the church i keep saying that either the lord will rapture the church and so like blast them with judgment in the tribulation or he will just kill them all and give uh, like in uh, neutralize enough of them for us to finally be given reprieve like a plague that will get sent on a town wiping people out until uh those who are alive realize that a plague is wiping them out because of their wickedness and then they stop and so the plague is stayed the plague is then stayed that's what's good yeah well that is currently happening right now where literally there is no <coughs> rest for the wicked <coughs> with my cousin she has made a determination do you understand stay at what she is doing perpetually i told you guys she's a little stalker so she certainly watches my content even though it's not all of it i apologize for the speech like she watches my content even though it's not all of it and so when she watches my content she is ever more inspired to do random stuff she gets all itchy do you understand what i'm saying and so you know when when you are obsessing over a christian and you're not just casting one spell and then you'll come back after three weeks and but however you are rather focused on every word you're hanging on to every word they say and you're casting a spell on everything they're doing whoa on that day you are becoming a snare you're becoming an itch an irritation a disease a leprosy you are becoming something that god did not quite intend for his believers to endure perpetually we are not to just suffer we're reprieveless indefinitely even in persecution we get given a respite that's just the thing about the joy of the lord we are like the mona lisa we we smile do you understand even though we're, we're sad at the time mona lisa mona lisa they have named you you're like the lady with the mystery smile is it only because you're lonely they have named you for that mona lisa sadness in your smile do you smile to tempt the lover mona lisa or is this your way to hide your broken heart I, um you get my point that mona lisa song basically says that it's the smiling frowning lady at the same time christians are exactly like the mona lisa painting we smile through torment we smile through trouble we properly are able to have joy in the in the midst of sorrow 
Do you understand what I'm saying? It is absolutely possible, just like the Mona Lisa smile. But if we are just frowning, we are no longer that epic art piece. We are no longer an epic work of art. Only cause she's lonely they have named you for that Mona Lisa sadness in your smile. Like, now we're not an, a work of art, we're just a depressed bag of bones. And that ain't how we're supposed to be rolling as the body of Christ. So if somebody is perpetually inducing depression in a Christian, they gotta go. They gotta go. So witches are on death row. They, like I said, they are an endangered species, something like 24 hours a day. Because sometimes they get so obsessed with a Christian that they will determine to afflict them until kingdom come. Yeah, until they die. That's why the Bible says the righteous person may fall seven times, but he or she gets up each time. But the wicked are suddenly overcome by calamity. They have a sudden disappearance because they tend to be too menacing for them to be proliferated at any given moment. It is also written, I believe in Psalm 37, but somewhere there in the Proverbs or Psalms. Proverbs? I think it's the Proverbs. Okay, please go check it out. You can Google it. Uh, where it is written that I once saw a, a wicked man. I think it's Psalm 73 or Psalm 37. I once saw a wicked man spreading himself like a green laurel tree. And one day I went and I looked for him and behold, he was nowhere to be found. They just suddenly disappear. Wicked men and women suddenly disappear. Why do they disappear? Because absent of sudden annihilation or sudden extinction, there is going to be perpetual persecution of a Christian that will cease to have the artistic beauty of Mona Lisa. All she will be is depressed. And I'm currently depressed. I'm going through a lot. I find some reprieve from doing this work that I do because it's very happy um, inducing. The word of God is, is lovely to me and to give my testimony is very healing the bible says that uh we overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony do you understand what i'm saying so indeed i overcome the devil by testifying but if i conquer today tonight and then i'm a little bit better and then tomorrow morning next to the bar and I'm, i just wake up for lord going through the the the, the, the world and jefela my eyes are squinted with sorrow nothing makes me smile anymore nobody that cracks a joke can 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 release you know nail tooth enamel like see a little bit of a smile or something if nobody can get to smile if nothing works that generally has been working uh, people are threatening my mona lisa edge they're threatening my mona lisa spunk and mona lisa spunk is part and parcel of the christian swagger we have joy to understand through tribulation we smile even in sorrow even in prison we're able to high five prison guards that's what we are as christians that's why you find all of these christians that are being arrested for no reason at all and becoming popular in prison just like joseph and they end up evangelizing people they end up be 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 belonging to prison ministries they end up having cellmates that are besotted with them because you know the the the, the, the christian is a uh, w the world is very bittersweet with us because we are of god we have the spirit of god and so they love us but they also hate to love us type thing so wherever you go as a believer you're going to be kind of popular however also kind of resented um and that popularity is what is going to make out of you like a uh, a little buzzing uh, sorry a, 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 what is this what do you call this thing like a, a bowl of honey while everybody else are like buzzing bees around you they will act like they ain't feeling you pass you shade but they're gonna like shift and shuffle around in, the, in, in, a, in a way that um, sort of kind of gravitates them towards you next thing they'll be hanging out with you like bubble gum that's how it used to be with me at MTN even though I used to get a lot of shade from people I also was very sub like surrounded by a lot of colleagues like all the time to a point where I used to have to work in a board room in order to get some peace and quiet and do my work and finish it because i was always surrounded at my desk it was the holy spirit the world is bittersweet with believers that way yeah so if you can't be that that that, that, that sweetness component of the bitter if you can't ever have the sweet component with the bitter somebody is trying to kill the christian swagger and no the christian swagger is what draws men to god for that is what the lord is using to make them realize the glory of the kingdom of heaven and when everybody is trying to make you this dampened spirit that's always just spitting out hellfire and brimstone but never the joy of the lord ah you're killing evangelistic endeavors you're killing uh recruitment drives into the kingdom of heaven there's enough recruitment drives into the kingdom of darkness and not enough for heaven so when you remove a laborer from the kingdom of heaven's joy you are causing people to struggle to even watch that content because misery loves company however miserable people 
keep each other's company well happy people avoid miserable people so if you're always just like uh -huh, every time in your testimony yes you might attract some miserable people the way that i guess flies would be attracted to some poop but if you want to attract happier people you're gonna have to be honey instead of poop so you can't be poop like all the time if you get what i mean and these people want to be party poopers and my cousin is trying to convert me into fecal matter 24 hours a day my goodness the he like proper there are days that i will even confess i am like because i i draw to myself wicked people with my testimony and all of my anger and my wrath at the occult there's gotta be a day where i'm so light-hearted that i'm like honey and i am drawing interested souls in the kingdom of heaven or to the kingdom of heaven i am drawing laborers potential laborers for the kingdom of heaven i cannot be poop 24 hours a day and my cousin wants me to stay poop and if i am that thing there is no attracting me there is absolutely no attracting christians no not christians and believers to the kingdom of heaven and that is my job that is my job i don't like stanking being angry all the time and what is the word that i'm looking for contentious when you are making war with the kingdom of darkness there are sides to jesus guys christ was like he also had the best of both worlds when it when it came to uh pharisees these hypocrites these teachers of the law jesus christ was very harsh he was like woe to you pharisees you teachers of the law careful to clean the cup on the outside but on the inside you are rotten you're like whitewashed tombs he sent them woes he called them a brood of vipers do you understand could not speak well with them at the temple he turned uh, he toppled the tables where the money changers were exchanging and gambling and all that jazz that was a side of christ that was drawing essentially flies like who is this guy like the pharisees were, were drawn to him and they were with attitude they were unrehabilitable they were mean-spirited they were giving him questions trying to trick him yeah so he spoke a particular way so as a christian you will always draw dintzinzi. you will draw dintzinzi. you will draw bad attention but you gotta be honey you gotta be honey and draw bees and christ was like that too where it is that he fed 4,000, fed 5,000, crowds were following him, he was healing people, he was talking gently to them, he was attracting prostitutes and tax collectors by hanging out with them and being kind to them that they might embrace the kingdom of heaven. He gave a prophecy to the woman at the well, telling her everything that she's ever done, and she was happy with that. She was happy with that and said, I have met a man that told me everything about my life. To her, he was gentle. To her, he was sweet. To her, he was like a stroke of a feather on your cheek. But to the Pharisees, it was a whip a whip so a christian singing sing as the lord says of us that we must um strive to be made into the image of jesus christ take up our crosses and follow christ daily otherwise we're not worthy of him given that he calls us to be like uh it therefore must necessarily be true that the Holy Spirit enables us to be like him, meaning that the Holy Spirit will give us also that volcano and the still quiet lake. He will give us the thing that draws flies, but he will also give us the thing that draws, that draws, uh, uh, what is this, potential recruits for Christianity, but he will also bring us, abuse us. That's what's good. So if at all he does that, it means that we must have a side of us that is saying, woe to you Pharisees, teachers of the law, calling people a brood of vipers but we must also be able to be gentle and kind and talk to people who need to hear the gospel from a vantage point of understanding that even though they're a tax collector and a prostitute the lord god almighty will stay and hang out with them to explain the gospel to them that they might be saved and so therefore freed from their life of sin that's what's good so mean lately i've been more like poop than honey and it's been rough for the holy spirit to just kind of roll around in that state perpetually because then it will turn off other people that are supposed to be listening to my ministry that are innocent that are just trying to get saved do you understand what i'm saying because i'm so busy fighting the occult i am so busy fighting recalcitrant people that are trying to finish me off that all i can do is concentrate on them and this cousin of mine wants to keep me in this angry mode the world is is hurting christians so much right now that they want to keep us in this angry cracking a whip topping uh, uh top toppling tables uh, with the money changers at the temple of god saying this house is supposed to be a house of prayer but you've made it a den full of thieves it's just made us these hard knock christians that are angry at everybody without taking for granted that there are people that frankly just need a, a lighter message because they're interested in hearing what they have to say but they feel very accused by you when you're always just yelling and shouting because they don't understand that you're talking to a particular set of people and not them and the lord god almighty has seen that the contention in me because i'm busy warring with whitewashed tombs literally hypocritical people that i have got one foot in christianity and another foot out many of which are involved in the occult i'm making a, a double war in the sense that i'm fighting the occult but i'm also fighting christians that are not christians professing christians that are lost 
that are trying to disprove my Christianity and my witness by hurting me and some of them are even practicing witchcraft they are literally like a brood of vipers and John the Baptist and Jesus Christ will call them just that with John the Baptist also telling them you better be in keeping up with repentance because the Lord has sent out a winnowing fork he will separate the goats from the sheep when you are talking to that like that to Pharisees in the presence of regular Hebrews they might misconstrue you or misunderstand you as m mocking them for being insane too whereas really john the baptist was trying to put the pharisees in their place because he knew that there were religious uh, bigots that were putting a yoke on people that is too heavy for them when in and of themselves they're basically condemned uh, type establishment thing and they also cannot carry it there there's just yeah god requires he insists on balance he insists on balance because there's got to be a, a whip that you're cracking but there's also got to be a gentle boat that you are you know putting at, at shore docking it that people might board on without feeling judged and i'm having difficulty finding that balance because i am always so angry i'm always so mad because i'm always under so much attack from so many witches that i can't help but address these brood of vipers to a point where i feel as if though when are the days of me being honey returning to me when are the days of me being honey drawing bees returning to me because i cannot be angry all the time on that day i'm not a christian i am just some cult member on that day i am because there, there gotta be kindness otherwise i'm going to um fail the first corinthians test of love that fruit that is love god says that uh love keeps no record of past wrongs it is gentle it is kind um love uh, also what is this um is always uh, oh endures all things bears all things go read 1 corinthians 13 so if you don't walk in love what does the the same passage of scripture also say you will be like a loud gong and a clanging cymbal when you speak prophecies and you uh, use tongues from here to timbuktu but without love you are just a loud gong and a clanging cymbal they are threatening that in me where it is that i'm gonna end up a loud gong and a clanging symbol because I'm always angry. They're going to reduce me to an Ephesian who has forgotten their first love because I'm always just making war with the occult and God wants nothing to do with that. So if at all you take away the joy of a Christian, uh, understand God is going to move you out the way. So when about you can go back to being a mellifluous song, but like encouraging people with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs instead of being angry all the time. Like Kelis, I hate you so much right now. Yeah, anyway, yeah, I have a cousin. Is currently doing that to me and the lord has been describing not just my cousin but this guy from america and a whole bunch of other people in the occult as hamas you know how they went and they attacked israel out of the blue in jefela and nobody understands what in the world under heaven inspired them because that because it lacks wisdom why does it lack wisdom they're not nearly as strong as israel and yet they went and they attacked israel god must have confounded their speeches my cousin is like hamas so too is the occult. So too is everybody that comes against Christians. You might catch us off guard and hit us with a surprise attack that we never saw coming. But you are so naive in thinking that you've got this. Right now, I'm actually looking at a headline on YouTube by one of the people covering this particular uh, story. And it is written that... Let me go into that particular YouTube page. Yeah. Israel will turn Gaza into a desert wasteland. That That is what it is that uh, Netanyahu... Uh, uh, that's what Bibi is saying about this attack on Israel. That they're going to turn Gaza into a desert wasteland. Wicked folk. You are about to become indeed just that, a desert wasteland. Because you naively, as the small little army that you are, thoroughly came against such a sophisticated country militarily that you cannot stand. You cannot stand. Uh, Jerusalem will become a cup of trembling. All who would try to heave it away will be surely turned to dust or something. That's what the scriptures say. Like a wood pan in a stock pile or something of that nature. God will ransack. Do you understand? All the surrounding nations around Israel on behalf of her. That's what's happening. Mm. Jerusalem becomes a cup of trembling. But underestimation will make you attack a person that is that covered by God. Uh, in the book of E... e not Elijah. How can I say this? Not the book of Elijah. Karabo. <laughs> <coughs> I think it's first or second Kings. It might be first. I stand corrected. Yeah. Uh, Elisha is communicated to that he must open his eyes or something or one of the servants of Elisha because those who are with Elisha and them are more numerous than those who are with the enemy camp. And that's always been a reality within Christianity where it is that we might look outnumbered and indeed the road is narrow <coughs> that leads to life and few people find it. 
But our outnumbered state and what is our meek and lowly position sometimes makes people underestimate the living daylights out of us until it becomes discovered later on that the, those who are with Garabo were and always have been more numerous are and always have been more numerous than those who are with the evil cousin. Like with my cousin, for instance, yeah, guys, Yazi, let me move to the next part. 